This podcast is brought to you by healthrangerstore.com. Lab tested clean foods and supplements for immune function, long term storage, and survival applications. Every purchase helps fund this free speech video platform. Thank you for your support. I've got a new free audiobook coming out called Survival Nutrition. And in that book, I have a very detailed discussion about sprouts and sprouting. I'm going to go over some of that here just to give you an overview of why sprouting is so important for your health and also for your survival plans. But I want to encourage you to download the full free audio book as it's available. It'll be posted at survivalnutrition.com. That's survivalnutrition.com. You'll be able to download the MP3 files free of charge, as well as a PDF transcript of the entire audiobook. It's about an eight hour uh, audio series. Uh, you could call it a lecture or a, or a book or, or whatever. It's got uh, chapters of very, very valuable information about how to survive with uh, foods and nutrition, superfoods. And it, I think it's the most important book that I put out in years, frankly. So uh, that's coming up. But let's talk about sprouting here because sprouting is something that I do every day. And it's so much simpler than you think. I'm not an advocate of the sprouting machines. I've tried all the sprouting machines. And although they do work, they have two major drawbacks. One is that they require electricity, typically. I'm talking about the ones that have the the water pumps and they they spray water to kind of sprinkle the sprouts and they recycle the water. And the 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 problem is not only that they use electricity, which means they're not going to work during a grid down scenario, but also that that water gets dirtier and dirtier over time very quickly. You actually need fresh water. And there is a sprouting machine, forgot the name of it, that does only use fresh water and the old water drains out. And that's a pretty good setup, but it still uses electricity. The simplest thing that I found is to use wide mouth jars, like the canning jars. Ball, I think, is the, the brand. And then there are sprouting lids that you can get that have a built-in screen, and they have kind of feet. So you can, you can turn the jar upside down, and it will stay upright, standing on the feet that extend from this sprouting lid. And all you do is you rinse the sprouts essentially twice a day. You just rinse them. You put fresh water in them. Uh, you keep the lid on. You put in fresh water. You pour out the excess and you turn the jar upside down so that the, the sprouting lid is on the bottom. And you just have a little, some kind of a plastic container underneath it to catch the excess water, which isn't much, you know, just a, a few drops here and there. And then to start it so easy, you just put in like a tablespoon of alfalfa sprouts and you just rinse it twice a day. And yeah, you can soak the seeds for eight hours right up front to get them to start quickly. But after that, you just rinse it once each morning and once each evening. And guess what? You know, in three to five days, you've got sprouts. And then when you've got the sprouts, you just use the same jar and you stick it in the fridge. And you have just grown incredible, powerful, living nutrition. And the easiest way to eat these sprouts, I found, I mean, alfalfa sprouts are pretty delicious by themselves. But add some salad dressing. Just put like Caesar dressing mixed in with the sprouts. Or have some lettuce, have a salad and, and just cover it with sprouts and then have dressing on top of that. I can eat like a jar of sprouts a day using that method. I don't always eat that much, maybe half a jar, let's say, you know, like a, a wide mouth canning jar. But it's so easy to do. And the, the thing to understand about sprouting, and I explained this in the book, Survival Nutrition, is that the sprouts are synthesizing medicine for you. The sprouts are actually growing nutrients. They are literally synthesizing them from a chemistry point of view. They're taking, the sprouts are taking hydrogen and oxygen out of the water, and they're taking carbon out of the air. And using this carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, they are synthesizing powerful nutrients such as vitamin A, for example, or vitamin C, or, you know, a thousand other things like, you know, 
broccoli nutrients or alfalfa nutrients or chlorophyll, uh, which also requires a bit of magnesium, but they've got some of that in the seed to start with. So sprouts are actually a, a vitamin factory. They synthesize vitamins. They make them. In other words, here's, here's an easy way to explain this. If you just take a bunch of sprouting seeds that are dry and that haven't sprouted, and you were to just chew those up and swallow them, you wouldn't be getting the vitamins that are present if you allow them to sprout for three days and then you eat them. Now you're getting something very different, even though they started from the same exact seed. During that sprouting process, the, the, the seeds are, are literally synthesizing nutrients by pulling carbon out of the air. And these nutrients have medicinal value medicinal properties in your body. And so if you think about it, by storing sprouting seeds, you are in effect storing the potential to make medicine, to make vitamins. And all you have to do to make those vitamins is add water and have a sprouting jar and wait a few days. And that's it. That's what's amazing about it. So a seed is a long-term storable uh, potential, like a battery for nutrients. You could call it like a, like a nutrient factory battery. And all you have to do is add water and, and then the factory turns on and it starts churning out nutrients. And all you have to do is chew them up and swallow them to get the benefits. And you can replace, believe it or not, a whole lot of supplements that you might buy at a vitamin store. You can replace them, including lots of uh, enzymes and so on, just by sprouting and eating the sprouts. You are eating you know, hundreds of different nutrients that are created during the sprouting process. And here's something even better. If you feed your sprouts, you know, when you rinse them with water, if you feed them some trace minerals, just a little bit, and you can get trace minerals from lots of different sources, including our store online, healthrangerstore.com. But if you, if you put in a few drops after you rinse the sprout seeds, you know, after the water is washed out, you add a few drops of uh, trace minerals, which are usually... They, they come from a Great Salt Lake, for example, or some companies sell concentrated uh, ocean minerals. These elements, and usually it's 90 plus elements, these elements, when they go into the sprouts through the roots, the sprouts convert those elements into bioavailable forms of those minerals. And I'm using the term elements and minerals uh, interchangeably here. So if you want to increase, for example, your intake of selenium, or copper, or zinc, all of which are trace minerals. You don't need very much of those. You, you need hardly any, just a very trace amount. In fact, too much is toxic. Well, if you feed a, a trace mineral liquid to your sprouts, your sprouts are incorporating those minerals and transforming them into a bioavailable format, a plant-based format that's compatible with human digestion and assimilation. Uh, for example, if you take calcium carbonate, which is ground up oyster shells or limestone or whatever, you go buy that in a, in a vitamin store as a calcium supplement, and it comes in a giant pill, and it's white and chalky looking, and it's useless. Your body can't use calcium carbonate, hardly at all. Why are you eating basically rock dust? Makes no sense, right? But if you were to take some of that and grind it up and then feed it to your sprouts, as part of the trace minerals, your sprouts would take in the calcium and then they would convert it to other forms of calcium that are compatible with human digestion. Now you are synthesizing organic calcium forms that your body recognizes as food. And sprouts are the mechanism that carries out the transformation. And again, with sprouts, what's beautiful about it is you don't need soil, you don't need sunlight, you don't need any light. You don't need artificial lights, you know, fluorescent lights. You just need a jar and water and obviously air, but hopefully you have air. Otherwise, we're all in worse trouble <laughs> than we realize. But that's all you need. Sprouts are Mother Nature's vitamin synthesis factories, as well as mineral transformation factories to give you outstanding nutrition for pennies on the dollar. It's a survival food but it's also about surviving during good times. It's a way to grow your own vitamins and even save money on nutrition. 
And that's why sprouting should be part of everything that you do. So be sure to check out my new book, survivalnutrition.com, for a lot of wisdom on this topic and many other topics. I'm Mike Adams, the Health Ranger. Thank you for listening. Also, be sure to check out my social media account at brighteon.social. Thank you for listening. A global reset is coming, and that's why I've recorded a new nine-hour audiobook. It's called The Global Reset Survival Guide. You can download it for free by subscribing to the naturalnews.com email newsletter, which is also free. I'll describe how the monetary system fails. I also cover emergency medicine and first aid and what to buy to help you avoid infections. So download this guide. It's free. It's my gift to you simply because I want like-minded people to survive.